In a stunning close to his congressional career, Sen. L. Frank and DMINN on Thursday announced that he will resign amid multiple allegations that he touched women inappropriately, becoming the second lawmaker to step aside over such accusations in three days. Yielding to pressure from other Democrats, Franken said he will leave Capitol Hill in the coming weeks, but continued to deny allegations of groping and unwanted advances from more than half a dozen women. The former rising Democratic star used his resignation speech to take aim at President Trump and Alabama Republican Senate candidate Roy Moore, who have not been forced aside despite facing arguably more serious allegations of sexual misconduct. There is some irony in the fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls' campaigns for the Senate with the full support of his party, Franken said in a speech on the Senate floor. The resignation of not one but two prominent Democratic lawmakers over allegations of inappropriate behavior points to the wider reckoning taking place around the country as women come forward to accuse powerful men of misconduct. Members of Congress have spent the last month grappling with how best to respond to allegations of harassment against colleagues and criticism of the way workplace complaints are handled in the legislative branch. On the Senate floor, Franken called the reckoning an important moment that is long overdue, but he denied engaging in behavior that disrespected or took advantage of women. Now there's been a very different picture of me painted over the last few weeks but I know who I really am, he said. I know in my heart that nothing I have done as a senator, nothing, has brought dishonor on this institution. He is expected to make his resignation effective at the end of the month, according to a person familiar with his decision-making. This timetable could allow him to cast several consequential votes on the Republican tax bill, funding the government and possibly the fate of dreamers, immigrants brought to the country illegally as children. Franken faced a cascade of opposition the day after Rep. John Conyers Jr. D. Mish ended his 52-year career in Congress over accusations he harassed female aides, including propositioning them for sex. It is unclear whether the resignations will increase pressure on accused offenders in the House, including Reps. Blake Fair and Hold RTEX, and Ruben Kihu and DNEV, to step down. Once Franken makes his resignation official, Minnesota Gov. Mark Dade ND will pick a replacement to serve until a November 2018 special election. Whoever wins the special election will have to run again in 2020 to begin a new term if they desire to stay in the Senate. Franken suggested Thursday that he will be replaced by a woman. Minnesota's Democratic Farmer Labor Party has a large and largely female bench of upon-coming candidates, three of whom are seeking the party's 2018 gubernatorial nomination. Minnesotans deserve a senator who can focus all her energy on addressing the challenges they face every day, he said in his speech. The drive to purge Franken was a dramatic indication of the political toxicity that has grown around the issue of sexual harassment in recent months. It also stood as a stark and deliberate contrast with how the Republicans are handling Moore's candidacy in Alabama, where voters will cast ballots next week in a special Senate election. Multiple women have accused Moore of pursuing them romantically when they were teenagers and he was in his 30s. One of the women, Lee Korfman, alleged Moore touched her sexually when she was 14. Although most of the alleged actions took place before he was a senator, Franken was becoming a growing liability to his party, and Republicans had seized upon the allegations against him. Doug Jones, Moore's Democratic opponent in Alabama, had also called for him to step aside. Sen. L. Franken DMINN stood in front of journalists outside his Capitol Hill office on November 27 to comment on the sexual harassment allegations against him. Lena Marate Washington Post at Moore's Tuesday night rally, conservative pundit Gina Loudon declared that Republicans did not need lectures on morality from Democrats who had struggled with their own sex scandals, and cited both Conyers and Franken. Trump, himself the target of multiple allegations of sexual assault, has enthusiastically endorsed Moore, and the Republican Party is once again pouring money into the race after initially pulling back. Leading Senate Republicans have also toned down their negative comments about Moore, saying his fate should be up to the voters of Alabama and, if he is elected, the Senate Ethics Committee. Democrats said they agreed with Franken's Dow decision and called on Republicans to reject members of their party facing similar accusations. Now, Republicans must join Democrats in holding their own accountable. Sen. Sheldon Whitehouse Drive-I, said. The American people should take notice of national Republicans' support for a morally degraded Senate candidate in Alabama and a president in the Oval Office facing equally credible charges.
The move by Senate Democrats to oust Franken marked a dramatic turnaround in the fortunes of the one-time Saturday Night Live star. The senator from Minnesota had emerged as one of the Trump administration's sharpest foils on Capitol Hill, and as a potential 2020 presidential contender. The latest allegation against Franken came in a report published Wednesday by Politico. A former congressional aide whose name was withheld by the publication claimed that Franken had tried to forcibly kiss her after a taping of his radio show in 2006, two years before his election to the Senate. The woman claimed that Franken had told her, it's my right as an entertainer. Franken denied this allegation and said during his floor speech that while he did not believe other accusations or remember the encounters in the same way, he wanted to be sensitive to the growing national discussion over sexual harassment and misconduct. I was shocked. I was upset, he said of the allegations against him in recent weeks. But in responding to their claims, I wanted to be respectful of that broader conversation because all women deserve to be heard and their experience taken seriously. Franken's alleged offenses were arguably less serious than those attributed to Moore, or to Conyers, the longest-serving member of Congress, who was accused of demanding sexual favors from the women who worked for him. And to late last week, it appeared that Franken's fellow Democrats would allow his case to work its way through the Senate Ethics Committee, a process that would take months and perhaps years to reach a resolution. Senate Minority Leader Charles E. Schumer D.N.Y. joined it left by Sen. Sherrod Brown d'Ohio meets reporters following a close or strategy session on Capitol Hill on Tuesday. J. Scott Applewhite Associated Press